Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and I'm ready to do part two of working on this Wuba Dutch um, Salander clock. Like I said, even though it's not a cuckoo clock, there's a lot of it that functions as a cuckoo clock. And in one of the um, parts of this video, I'm going to show you a Dutch clock that has a cuckoo clock movement in it. So um, I hope y'all are enjoying it. I hope you're learning things. So kick back, relax, grab something to drink, grab something to smoke, grab something to eat, and let's learn things. Okay, so um, I bought a bunch of suspension springs off of Sally. Um, Sorry, off of Etsy, a uh, subscriber over in England. And I bought a hundred for like $50. Except for these, I've already got the pins in them. And so they will not work for this particular clock. You need one similar to this that has a pin for the pendulum and then a hole. That way you could stick it in this suspension spring shaft. But then you have to have a tapered pen to put in there. Well, my tapered pens don't fit. So I snipped off a piece of wire. I got it in my drill. I bent it just to show you how to straighten them out. Or how I straighten them out. Put in the drill, put the wire onto a, a block, and just keep tapping. It is straighter than what it was. Now I do this for um, bent gears also. I've successfully straightened some bent gears using this manner. Put it in, in your drill turning your drill on slowly and just tap and um, putting the gear I've got this metal block here you, you could use a piece of 2 by 4 and just keep tapping straight down until it's straight but now I need to make this pen tapered so uh, I have my Dremel I have a piece of uh, uh, stone on it. Lifting it up and down at an angle until it becomes tapered. It's not small enough yet, so continuing the process. A brass pen would be better, I guess than this steel pen, but I don't know how many brass pens that are big enough. So that's why I'm using this piece of wire. And there, as you can see, the piece of wire fits through 
that post. So now I'm going to take it out of my chuck. Now this chuck here, and I don't remember where I got it. This chuck, the drill will only close so far. If I can turn it around the other way. As you can see, there's a hole there. But this closes all the way. If I turn it the right way. As you can see, there's not a hole there. So if you can get your hands on a chuck like this, it's perfect for doing certain things. Here I have the movement in my stand. And we're going to talk about the suspension unit. They're different on different style clocks. And this particular clock, the Burge, the crutch assembly comes out of the movement. And this piece right here, this, I don't know, three inch piece here, is attached to the suspension spring. And then the pendulum attaches to it. I'm going to see if I can do this on camera. It's got the little twist in it, and you, this notch right here is how you put it in. This attaches to the suspension spring. This piece down here attaches to the pendulum. But you put this in, give it a twist, bring it up, attach it to the suspension spring, Make sure that you connect it to the suspension spring collect correctly as there's a split in the top section. And then bring it down. And then you connect these pendulum. And again, from the last video, I know this is not the right pendulum. It takes a different style pendulum. But I don't have one at the moment. And then you give it a... Um, a swing. And if you're deaf like me, you got a B amplifier hook. That's pretty close right there. And again, you adjust this by pulling the crutch or pushing the crutch until you get the even amount of beats. And this foot, this part of the crutch has to be parallel with the ground just like in a cuckoo clock. And you just leave it there. Even though it, it, it might sound like it's in beat, you leave it there because if the pendulum starts slowing down to where it stays in beat, Remember I told you in the last video, that's where you have to adjust the pallets on the crutch assembly. Sorry, on the burge. And that's what these two screws are for. So you can raise and lower this. But I'm going to take you in the other room and show you some different ones. So stand by. 
uh, you, you might have seen this video. This is my uh, Wuba Dutch clock, cylinder clock, but it's a one chain system. There's a heavier weight here and a counterweight on the ground there, but it's one chain. And I can see if I can take this off the wall. But this movement is set up like a cuckoo clock. And you see the virgin crutch assembly is set up just like a cuckoo clock. But that pendulum that I have on the other clock, that's the one I got on this clock. I'm just using it. But it's a one day movement. It's a one chain system. I love it. Here's that clock I told you it takes those special figures to go on top. Well, I didn't have the figures. But the movement itself is set up differently than the previous two clocks that I showed you. And in this case, the pendulum has got this hook on it that goes on the bottom of the suspension spring. The movement is similar to a cuckoo clock movement, but different. It's similar to a I can't think of the the name of the uh, uh, clock, but anyway, it's similar to a cuckoo clock movement. And this is the pendulum for this clock. This clock here, moon dial clock, just like the one that we're working on, it has the same setup. Brand thermal movement in it, same setup to where it needs that suspension unit. In fact, this is the clock that I took that suspension unit out of. But it has a little bit of damage to the clock, so I have to repair all that. And then I have this clock. It's all, also a warm ink clock. It's uh, missing the glass. Spring driven Westminster chimes uh, bracket clock. But we came back to this movement. It's still ticking away. But because it has such a short swing, it tells me that the crutch assembly, sorry, the verge assembly pallets are too far away from the escapement wheel. So it's, it's doing this number where it needs to do this number. So I need to lower the, um, the pallets to get a longer swing. And just how I discuss with cuckoo clocks, here the suspension leader is bouncing off the foot. And lowering the, uh, the pallets gives it a bigger swing. 
again, this is not the right pendulum. It's not the right weights. These are teardrop weights, and they're used on a different style of clock. But one time, to let you listen to the bell. I got security cameras set up in my house, and ever since I downloaded the uh, program for the security camera, even when my phone is on airplane mode, it shuts off my videos. It tries to open up some stupid web page. I'm not too happy with that. But anyway, it's about time to put this movement back into the case. I still have to come up with some brackets. If you remember correctly, this is the uh, web page I put in my last video, part one. And this shows you the uh, Salander wall clock. It takes a starburst type pendulum. It takes these type of weights. But, you know, I get these clocks cheap enough that I'm not going to go out and buy... Um, weights for it. They're my clocks. I've got plenty of 8-day cuckoo clock weights. And the uh, brackets, same clock, two different clocks, but same Salander wall clock. And let me discuss that. This clock that I'm working on, there's only holes for the chains and the pendulum in the bottom of the case. Same style movement as the other clock I showed you. Same clock. There's these holes right here that you would screw screws in if there were holes in the bottom of the case. To hold that movement in place. But why they made them differently. I have no idea. Like I said the clock that we're working on. There's that slot in the bottom of the case. And then there would be brackets. To screw the movement down. In the top of the case. Those brackets, the other clock I showed you, have got those same kind of brackets. And um, when I got the clock, uh, it was damaged. I ended up getting the clock for free because I made a claim. I, I had to pay shipping, but I got the clock for the price of shipping. Not the, this particular clock. Because I waited too long to uh, open up the package. But with this clock, like I said, it's the same kind of clock. Same style clock. Same type of windows. But the movement is screwed in with those screws at the bottom of the uh, case. And that's what holds the movement in. There's no brackets at the top in this particular case. And I don't think this clock was made by Wuba. And the reason I say that, if you remember in my other first part of this video... I said that Wuba used high grade wood and you see this wood is particle board. It might have been made by the warm ink company, but I don't believe it was. This clock was made by the warm ink company and this is the clock that I told you that's got those special figures on it. But it has brackets 
in the bottom and at the top to hold the movement in. And here's that clock. It's a Frisian vintage. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Dutch clock. Moon dial. There's the figures that I don't have. There's the pendulum. As you can see, it's the same anchor style pendulum. It's got the right weights. It's just uh, I don't have the figures. But I didn't pay $300 for the clock. I pay like... It, it was originally going to cost me $110, I believe. But it was damaged. So I got it for like $20. And that was for the price of the shipping. Now my clock very well could be this clock also. And it needs those type of uh, toppers. My clock has got this cutaway circle. It looks very similar to this clock. It is an 8 day clock. It's still a Parisian antique vintage Chippeau Dutch clock, 8 day clock. Says that they were made around 1960s. It is a warming clock. Um, but It, it says right here, these types of clocks were called, which means skipper, because of these clocks were used as on Dutch boats. This because they were able to keep running as the boat was rocking because of the sea. Later on, the Dutch were, were fond of this design and bought them to hang them in their houses on the wall. Friesian tall clocks were produced in the region of Friesland, which is in the northern region of the Netherlands. But like I said, it very well could supposed to have, you know, here's two different styles. One with that cutaway circle, and one without that cutaway circle. This one is 385. This one is 300. But they don't have those right there anymore. Sold out. Anyway, just trying to give you a little bit of information. If you go to the original part one of this video, you will find this website. So I was looking around my house to find out what I could use for those top brackets. And here I have a piece of plumbing fixture. That, when I cut it off, the screw will come down from the top and the, the the part that I cut off will hit the movement or I could use this copper piece. I think I'm going to go with the plastic piece. I think it will be sturdy enough to uh, hold the movement in and it won't scratch up the movement. And this is what I was talking about. I'm going to use these. As you can see, it fits down in there. And I don't think it will scratch up the movement. If I use metal, then it would scratch up the plate. And I don't want it to scratch up the plate. Now, hopefully you can see, but there's a plastic bracket there. And there's one over here by the bell. 
And so, uh, the movement stays in place. So now it's time to put the hands on the weights and the pendulum and uh, hang it up. It's one of the last spots that I have left in my house to hang up clocks. But one time, now nah, I gotta turn this off in order for you to hear the bell. I hope y'all like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And may God bless each and every one of you. And yes, I do have a few wooden plate movements that I picked up. Some rather cheap. I hope y'all enjoyed uh, this part of the video. Um, again, I bought these clocks fairly cheap compared to the, the listings in the web page that I showed you. And so I don't want to spend a lot of money on them because if you do a set of weights for an HA, um, freezing, uh, clock like this is about fifty dollars and that is for brass painted weights and not the actual brass weights um and that's for the teardrop shape weights these set of weights um let me look on time savers real fast i don't see the weights on time savers for uh uh, Friesian or Salinger clocks, they have the Zandam weights, gold painted, 380 grams, which is for the one day clocks, or 2250 a piece. And then for the 1000 gram weights, they're 2950 a piece. And that's for the eight day clocks. And so I don't see the weights for uh, this type of clock on time savers. Now let me look for the pendulum. Here they had the Zandam clock pendulum, which is thirteen fifty a piece. I couldn't find the Frisian slash Salander clock pendulum. I did find one for a French clock that was a Starburst pendulum, but it's just the pendulum bob, and then you have to. And uh, fortunately, they're only $3 a piece right now. But then you have to buy the hook and the rod assembly. Um, so there is uh, another site out of Canada that sells parts. But again, I'm not going to spend any more money on these clocks. I use cuckoo clock weights. I will make up a pendulum and a bob before I spend a ton of money on clocks. Um, if and when I die, my children sell the clocks. The new owner can um, come up with the uh, original pendulum if they want to spend that kind of money. But that... I guess depends on how much my children sell the clocks for. But anyway, I hope y'all like this video. Uh, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Not for sure what we're going to do next. I kind of have an idea, but um, I might work on one of my other uh, warming clocks. Or I've got plenty of clocks to work on. 
It might not have anything to do with cuckoo clocks, but the more knowledge you have about clocks, the better. Uh, leave, please leave me some comments, and I, I like reviewing the comments, and I'll reply to every one of them, but make sure they're professional comments. I don't want to get on here and see people griping me out uh, for providing free information. I'm sorry about my lighting. Again, my electric bill this month and last month was almost $300. <laughs> That's a house payment. So, um, anyway, may God bless each and every one of you.